Welcome to the Apostolic Encounter with the General Overseer of Top Ministries International, Rev. Osei Kovna. Sit back to enjoy the message. Kindly share this message to bless others. We bless the name of the Lord for another opportunity to be at His feet. And I want to welcome you, but remind you that the virus is still around. You need to take good care of yourself and may God richly bless you. Amen. Today we want to start some series on Abraham. So I call it Lessons from Father Abraham. Lessons from Father Abraham. And I want to encourage you to follow us in these series and we'll learn a few things which will be a blessing to your life and ministry. Amen. God called Abraham. Shall we get into the scriptures? And let's come to Genesis chapter number 12. Let's start from verse 1. Genesis 12 verse number 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. I want you to know there are three places he must get out. And now, now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of one, thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Mm-hmm. Two. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Thou shalt be a blessing. That's three. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Amen. Good. Very interesting and a good promise from the Lord. Mm? Hallelujah. So Abraham had to get out from his country, from his family. And then he said, you have your kindred and your family. You see, so, but interestingly, when Abraham started to move away, or started walking in obedience to God, the father joined him. They left El of, uh, of Chadis, but the father was with him. But along the way, the father died before we came to chapter number 12 in chapter 11. But interesting, very something interesting. Still remember that Lord was not one called to be with Abraham. Because God said, in thee, in you, Abraham, out of thy loins will the blessings of God come. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. But somehow, Lord also followed him and he was with him. Hallelujah. But there's something I want us to learn. Very, very, very important. Mm. Abraham believed what God had told him. When he said, indeed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Abraham believed that. And the Bible said it was accounted to him for righteousness. So faith made him righteous. Number one, note that word. Faith made him righteous. Hallelujah. Mm. Abraham became righteous because of his faith. He believed in God. Day one. Obedience set him on a path which only God had a compass. Listen, I want you to think about this statement carefully. Obedience set Abraham on a path which only God had the compass. It was only God who knows the route to get him to Canaan, the promised land. It was only God. And how can he just do that? He had no idea. He had not been to there. He had no information about that place. It was only God. So faith him brought him to God. God have said it. Abraham believed it. And he was willing to go. And so when he began to walk in obedience, he was set on a path which only God had the compass. Hear me, somebody. I want to ask you a question. Can you tell me what is in your future? What will happen? Hallelujah. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. 
We are called to walk on a path which only God has a compass. We are set to walk. And if only we can trust the Lord, he will guide our steps and bring him to a place of destiny where he has purpose for our life. But if we will not and we want to do our own thing, God will be silent and be watching us. Hallelujah. He was set on a path which only God have the compass. But Abraham believed God. Then how is he going to move on this wall? Now he, he, know, he knew what he would do. Genesis 12, let's get to the verse number 7. Abraham now started walking with God. And look at him. Mm -hmm. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said unto, unto thy seed will I give this land. And there built he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Abraham knew that the only way to keep him going is very simple. Just simply walk in faith and obey what God has said. Hallelujah. And now he walked with God. And the interesting thing is that the only way he will not meet his path is to get close to God. So everywhere Abraham goes, he built his altars. So where Abraham is, uh, Abraham near, altar near. Where Abraham is, you find his altar. Why? He need to get closer, that he will not miss his compass. He will not get the root. He will not miss the root. He followed the law by faith and came into the promised land and dwell in tent. And God said, this is the promised land. I will give it unto you, your seed. Hallelujah. So he came in there and he dwelled there. God had the GPS compass for him. And he guided him and brought him here. What am I saying? Listen, you are a believer. You have come into the faith. Listen, it took God, Abraham a close walk for God to lead him from heir of Chaldees to the promised man. And if only we were in close relationship with him, the Bible said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God will order your steps and bring you into the place of promise. Where he has promised to give unto you. And all the purposes and the plans of God will begin to fulfill. If you only walk with him and to this place. Hallelujah. It's interesting. When you read the verse number 7. Abraham built an altar in Mary. Hmm. Hallelujah. God appeared to him in the plain. He built an altar there. And now let's get to the verse number 8. And he removed and then unto the mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent there. Having Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. In between Bethel and Ai, Abraham built his altar. At actually, this place became his resident place. He built a tent here and called upon the name of the Lord. So the only way Abraham can be in the promised land is that he must keep war. That fellowship on his altar regularly. He was there before God, praying and trusting the Lord. My brother, my sister, the truth is this. If you want to enjoy the blessings of the Lord, you need to keep a close relationship with him. Because the only way to get into your tomorrow, which God has destined, is by his direction and leadership. For it is written, as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. It will take the GPS of God to get into, into your destiny. He will guide and order yourself into the thing prepared for you. So if you will not keep close contact, mm -mm. <laughs> you will be out of coverage area. You will not, be, listen, if you will not keep that close contact, you will be that out of coverage area. It means you cannot receive any information from God. Hallelujah. There are times Abraham wants to do his own thing. For instance, in the promised land, he met what we call drought. Mm. So Abraham decided, I'll go to Egypt. 
It was not God who sent him there. And we do not hear Abraham asking God, should I go to Egypt? But Abraham went into Egypt. And in Egypt, <laughs> listen, everywhere God, Abraham will walk and go to, within the promised land, God showed up. But when he went out of the promised land, I want you to take note of it very carefully. Within the promised land, everywhere Abraham will move, God will show up. But when Abraham moved out of the promised land into Egypt, look at the language there. Mm, I love it. <laughs> Let's get to chapter 12. Mm -hmm. And then the verse number 10. And there was famine in the land, and Abraham went down into Egypt. I want you to take note. He went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. Abraham went down into Egypt. Praise the Lord. And we never heard anything about God in Egypt. When God visited Abraham, it was only a rebuke to save him. He went to Egypt, and he pledged the house of who? Pharaoh. Pharaoh had his own challenges because Abraham had come in there and for Abraham was planning his own survival, it was not God. Abraham said his wife was what? Was his sister. So they took her away from him and now God have to intervene. But God did not speak to Abraham. He never said anything to Abraham. Are you with me? One day I moved out from promised land without permission. Hallelujah. He had not sought God concerning the challenge in the promised land. May you not be that brother, that sister. Why you walk out and God will be silent on you. Come on. Stay in that promised land. Stay in what God wants you to do. And allow him to speak into your life. Mahashik Murhandaba. Don't abandon your promised land. No. But Abraham walked out from the promised land, working his own solution because there were farming in the promised land. And God was silent, look, watching him. He went in, he had difficulty, God went in there and rebuked Pharaoh. And Pharaoh, get back, get back, get out here. And so he came back to the place. And now the Bible said in Genesis 13 4, Abraham came back. <laughs> where? He came to the place where he has the altars. And call on the name of the Lord. Maria Hakaba. Uh, 13 4. 4 uh, Genesis 13 4. And unto the place of the altar which he had ma made there at the first. And there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. Mm. Abraham, why? Yes. You see, the challenge was simply this. He was. Trying his own way, fixing his own problems, and doing his own thing. But you are a covenant partner, call of God, to work in his purposes and plan. So you cannot do things on your own. Hallelujah. Listen, the root God has said for Abraham, it was only God who had a compass to it. So when you walk out of it, you break out the covenant. Hallelujah. You are a believer, hear me. The Bible says, as many as are led by God, they are the sons of God. Ah, uh, 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 you are not here. Are you with me? Mm. Romans chapter number 8, verse number 14. Mm. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You see, it means God will lead us by his spirit. When you become a child of God, when you are born into the family of God, when you have the spirit of God dwelling in you, God holds the GPS unto your future. You need to understand this. Because when Abraham believed God, he became righteous. You are believing Jesus Christ and you have become righteous. You have relationship with him. But if you walk with him, you don't do what you want. You must be led by God. Now, Abraham did something. He had challenges. Uh, Abraham also wants to be bugger. You understand that one? Uh, 
So he decided to solve his own problem. And he went to Egypt. And pretend started lying. My wife is my sister. Yes, they have some relation, but look, he was your wife. That's the point. Hallelujah. Because he's work, working his own solution. God was silent. In Egypt, God never showed up. Don't walk out, don't walk out of the, your promised land. The place God has called you to be and expect God to be directing and leading you. No. Stay in the promised land. When they are challenging, call upon the name of the Lord. Hold on to the altars. He will show up and direct thee. He will hold the GPS into your tomorrow. He will guide and lead you into the thing prepared for you. If you will not do that, then well, go ahead. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Abraham have challenged God. God went in there and saved him. Now when he came back to the promised land, Lord was still there. But now, Lord was also enjoying the blessings of the Lord. Why? Because he was with Abraham. But he never knew the blessing he had got was because of Abraham. These other things, brother, hear me. It was Abraham who was called. God spoke to him. And hear me. This is what God said. Indeed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. I will make you a blessing. I will bless you and you will be a blessing. Hallelujah. So Abraham did have that covenant with God. So long as he keep walking in the covenant promises. And then he stayed in the covenant promised land. These blessings will flow through him. Hallelujah. And now, Lord was also there with him when they were in the promised land. Wow. The blessings were so much. Now, they were competition for land. Why? Because they have so many cattle. And the herdsmen were fighting among themselves. So one day, when you get to the verse 8, 13, 8, Genesis 13, 8. And Abraham said unto the Lord, Let there be no strife. I pray thee between me and thee, and between my headmen and thy headmen, for we are brethren. We are what? Brethren. We don't have to fight. Mm -hmm. It's not the whole land before thee. Separate thyself. I pray thee from me. If thou will take the left hand, then I will go to the right. If thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. Mm -hmm. And Lord lifted up his eyes. Uh -huh. The kind of eyes. And behold, beheld all the plain of Jordan. That it, <laughs> it was well watered everywhere. Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as a garden of the law, like the land of Egypt, so as thou comest thou from Zohar. Mm -hmm. 11. Then Lord chose him all the plain of Jordan and Lord journey east. And they separated from <laughs> themselves and one from the other. Listen, I have told you, ah. Uh, Abraham set himself on who? The path which only God has the compass to it. Huh? That's it. Please keep that statement. Very, very important. Only God had a compass. Lord was wise in his eyes and in his head. He thought he had chosen the best of the land. He could not see far. He never knew Sodom was there. And he wanted to be there. Well watered land. I have grass for my sheep and cattle. And I'm going to be rich and be blessed. But that was not it. The blessings were coming from God. And God now called Abraham. After the Lord had left. Let's get to the verse 14. And the Lord said unto Abraham after Lord. After that, Lord was separated from him. Yes. Because the blessings and all that God promised to Abraham, Lord was not part of it. Lord was not part. Because he said, in thee, out of thee, you are going to separate from your country, your family, and then the others. Nobody. 
You coming out from them and your kindred. He didn't understand it from the side, but now when he was separated, now now lift up now the eyes. It was God speaking to who? Abraham. The other one was Abraham, choose what you want. It was Abraham who spoke to the Lord. And being greedy, he thought he was going for the best. Mm -hmm. Lifted up his eyes and looked from the place where thou art. Northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lift up your hand. This time it is God showing him the promised land. The promised land. And Lord was not part. And after that, Lord has left. He was not part of a promised land. He was not called. Abraham had been called. He heard the word of the Lord. He believed and he was made righteous. And God called him. And he decided to follow God. He followed him into the promised land. And now God was leading him by his spirit. And guiding him. Showing him what to do. When he had challenges, he went out of the promised land into Egypt. And God brought him back. Hallelujah. And now. So you see. It's interesting. If you do not understand these things, how can you understand the things that be of God? And how can you enjoy the blessings of the Lord? And now God spoke to Abraham. And when you get to the verse number 18, then Abraham removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamia, which is in Hebron, and built there a an altar unto the Lord. So he is now in the promised land. So he moved to one place to the next. God showed up. And he, anywhere God will show up, reveal himself to him and spoke to him, now he will build an altar there. So he moved now this time to Hebron and he built his altar there. And God walked with him. Hallelujah. Brethren, listen to me. You have been called into the faith. You have believed in Jesus Christ. You have been made righteous. And now I've got a relationship with him. The, the truth is that, hear me. You need to keep watching closely with him. Keep that altar ministry. That personal relation with him. Because, listen, the GPS of your life or the future of your life reside in the hand of the law. He said, the saints or the righteous will be led by the spirit. It's God who will lead you into your tomorrow. The thing prepared a destiny for your life. They are there. But it will take God to bring you in there. But many a time, you see, like, like Abraham, we want to solve our own problem. So he had his own challenges. He came back and God was with him anyway. And now, it's interesting. When you get to chapter number 14, you will find out that Lord dwelt in the gates of Sodom. And he had challenges. There was battle in Sodom. There are always war in places like Sodom. There are places of confusion and battles going on. He dwelled there and he was captured in a war. But God, Abraham went out there with the trained men in his own house and he fought and delivered him out from the hand of a the enemies. He was set free because he went in, because Abraham had it and he went and fight and deliver Lot and the king of Sodom. He set them all of them free. Praise the Lord. What am I saying? The truth is this. If God be with you, who can be against you? There are battles that may come in your way, but he will help you out. There are challenges in life, yes. But let God be with you and allow him to lead you and you will overcome. And when he came out from Sodom, he had a story. Let's get to chapter 14. Let's get to the verse number 18 to 20 where he paid tight. Mm -hmm. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine and he was the priest of the Most High. And he blessed him and said, 
Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And Abraham be, and blessed be the Most High God, which have delivered thee, thy enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Now listen. When you read this passage, all these things happen in the promised land. Not outside of the promise, the, those visitations, Melchizedek coming, they all happen in the promised land. And he paid tithe because he was in the promised land. We never knew that we have to pay tithe. When you come into the promised land, when you become a child of God, when you come into the house of God, then you behave like Father Abraham. You start paying tithe. Tithe is not from the law, but tithe is coming out from who? Father Abraham. He had been to war and he had won. And he fought and defeated the enemies. But then he decided to give tithe of all unto Abraham. Read the tithe. He gave him tithe of all. Listen to me. It's important that we look at the text. Normally we say, he paid tithe, he paid tithe. But here, it is paid tithe of all. Because many people take part of the money and they give it as tithe. But it is not paid tithe of all. When you talk about tithe, it's always, when you go to Malachi, it say, pay tithe of all. You don't pay part of the tithe and keep part. It's, when you re refuse to pay all, you haven't paid tithe. You got tithe is 10%. I want you to understand this. But Abraham in the promised land introduced tithing. That is Father Abraham. He said, how do you know it? Go and ask him. Hallelujah. The only person who can answer you is, go and ask him. God revealed to him and Abraham now paid tithe to Melchizedek. The man who have no father, no mother, no beginning of this or ending of life. And he blessed Abraham. If Abraham gave tithe unto Melchizedek, I will give tithe unto the Lord. And my God will bless me. The blessings of Abraham will come upon my life because I begin by faith to walk like Father Abraham, to walk in faith and obedience. And I allow God to chatter my life course. And he will lead me by his spirit and guide me into my promised land. The place prepared for my life. I am coming in there. The blessings of the Lord will flow because God has said, I will bless him and he will be a blessing. May you be that brother, that sister who is walking in faith and into the blessings of God that you become a blessing. Become that pipeline, that pipeline out of your life may flow the grace and the mercies of God to be a blessing to people. God bless Abraham and make him a blessing. God wants to bless you that you'll be what? A blessing. May your life be full of blessing. May the mercies of the Lord be your portion. May the favor of the Lord be released on your life. You are called to be a blessing. You are called to be a blessing. That pipeline, that channel. But you need to walk by faith and stay in the promised land. Stay in the purpose and in the plan of God for your life. Stay in your promised land. And there shall be a divine visitation and there shall be a manifestation of God in your life. We honor you, Lord. We give you thanks. Brethren, I want to pray with you now. Hear me, it's interesting. God loves you. He's interested in you. He wants you to learn from Abraham. And he wants you to walk by faith. It is not by sight. Walk by faith. Yes. The GPS of your life is in God's hand. He will direct your path into the place where you must be. He is. He has said, the saints will be led by his spirit. These are the days when we are being led. By your head and your prayer. I want you to make this a prayer, your prayer topic. Oh, God of mercy. God of covenant keeping God. Help me, oh God. To commit my life to you. And may your spirit lead and guide me. Guide me in my next move. Order my steps. In my next decisions. Guide me to the place. Of my promises. May I enter into my promised land. Where I'll keep the relationship. Where I'll keep the blessings. May I taste of the blessings of God. May I receive your grace, Lord. 
I bless you, Lord. Thou who bless Abraham, I make him a blessing. Remember thou me, Lord. I make a commitment to walk with thee, to follow thee, and to yield my spirit to thee. Guide me to the place that I have destined for my life. May I be rooted and be planted. If I be planted in that place, yes, Lord. And you make room for me that I will be fruitful in this land. I want to be fruitful in my promised land. I want my life to be fruitful in this promised land. I honor you, Lord. I give you thanks. I give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. You want to commit your life to Christ and you want Jesus to save you, please pray this prayer with me. Believe it in your heart. Lord Jesus, thank you that you died for me. Lord, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. I believe you died and rose again. And you are seated at the right hand of God, making intercession for me. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. See you next time. God bless you. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for having time with the General Overseer. You can follow Reverend Russo Kobana on social media for prayers and counseling. Please call plus 233-244-61-4965. Thank you and God bless you.